Imagine traversing the highlands of Peru and stumbling upon the ruins of Machu Picchu. This ancient Inca site, perched between the stark peaks of the Andes, is not just a wonder of the world, but also a marvel of engineering that leaves even the most skeptical visitor in awe. The Incas constructed this citadel without the wheel, without iron tools, and without a written plan, yet its buildings, terraces, and ramps blend seamlessly into the mountain topography. What's particularly astonishing is the precision with which the Incas cut and fitted stones. Some of these stones weigh well over 50 tons, yet they interlock with such exactness that the joints don't permit the passage of a hair. This level of detail suggests more than just architectural prowess. It whispers of an intimate understanding of geology, geometry and astronomy. The stones themselves, some believe, carry a celestial secret. The Inca civilization revered the heavens, and their builders oriented the entire city astronomically. Certain windows and doorways align perfectly with the solstices, while others frame mountains that were sacred to their cosmology. There's a rhythmic pattern to these structures that seems to echo the celestial dance of stars and planets. Then there's the question of how these massive stones were transported. Legends speak of a mystical technique involving the use of sound to levitate the boulders. While this sounds like the stuff of science fiction, it aligns with the Inca's advanced knowledge of acoustics, evidenced by places like the Saksai Waman Fortress, where even a whisper can carry across great distances due to the architecture's acoustic properties. The method of cutting the stones is equally baffling. Some stones have perfectly straight cuts and angles that would challenge modern power tools. Theories abound, from the use of a plant with acidic properties to soften rock, to the possibility of advanced ancient technologies lost to time. The lack of definitive evidence has allowed speculation to flourish, with some postulating that these cutting methods are not of this world. Moreover, the way these structures have withstood the test of time and resisted earthquakes is further testimony to their engineering. The Incas employed a technique known as ashlar masonry, where stones are cut to fit together without mortar. Remarkably, during seismic activity, these stones dance. They move and then settle back into place, unharmed. This isn't just construction. It's a harmonious dialogue with the Earth's movements. One of the most tantalizing and mysterious legacies of the Inca civilization is the discovery of elongated skulls. These cranial deformations have spurred a wealth of speculation and intrigue, leading some to propose connections with otherworldly beings or unknown practices. The Inca culture, along with other Andean civilizations, practiced cranial deformation, a custom where the skulls of infants were intentionally modified through binding, resulting in elongated shapes as the child grew. It is a tradition found in many different cultures worldwide, but the prevalence and extremes to which it was taken in Inca society have captured the imagination of historians and enthusiasts alike. To the Incas, the elongated shape of the skull was associated with beauty, status, and nobility. It was likely that the practice began as an imitation of a naturally occurring genetic trait, a status symbol that distinguished the elite from the common populace. Skull deformation began shortly after birth, when the infant's skull was most pliable. Boards and tightly bound cloth were used to gradually alter the shape of the head over time. These skulls have led to various theories, ranging from the plausible to the fantastical. Some suggest that the Incas might have been trying to emulate the appearance of an esteemed ancestor or a revered figure from their mythology. Others have taken the presence of these skulls as evidence of ancient astronaut theories, suggesting that the Incas were mimicking beings from beyond the stars. Surgical skill is another aspect highlighted by Inca skulls. Not only did they modify skulls for aesthetic and cultural reasons, but they also performed successful cranial surgeries, trepanation for medical purposes. These surgeries often removed small pieces of the skull following trauma to reduce pressure and allow healing. The survival rate of these procedures was remarkably high for pre-modern surgery, attesting to their medical knowledge and skill. In the shadows of the Andean mountains lies evidence of a civilization that, at its peak, stretched over much of South America. The Incas, known for their sophisticated society and strikingly complex urban planning, were not just builders but artisans of the land who seemed to have a profound connection with their environment. Their architectural feats are not merely structures, they are symphonies of stone and earth, harmonizing with the undulating landscapes. 
One of the most puzzling aspects of Incarn architecture is its diversity and adaptation to the challenging terrain of the Andes. From the arid coastal plains to the steep highlands, Inca structures were tailored to their surroundings with such efficiency that modern engineers still study their techniques. For instance, the city of Pisac is a testament to the Inca's understanding of agricultural and urban planning. It features an integration of water management and terrace farming that maximizes the arable land area, turning steep mountainsides into lush, productive gardens. The use of terracing is a marvel in itself. These weren't just simple dirt embankments. The Incas constructed multi-layered terraces with a sophisticated drainage system to prevent water logging and soil erosion. Beneath the surface of each terrace lies a complex layering of sand, gravel and rock that filters water and ensures the survival of crops even in the harshest of droughts. And then there's Olante Tambo, a fortress that doubles as a temple, exhibiting both the defensive might and the spiritual aspirations of the Inca. It is home to some of the most massive stones ever used in Inca construction, which were transported from quarries miles away. The logistics of such an endeavor are mind-boggling, especially considering the steep terrain and lack of wheel-based transportation. Inca stonework is yet another enigma. The precision of their cuts is so remarkable that it often appears as if the stones have been molded like clay. No mortar was used, the stones are so exquisitely carved and wedged that they have survived centuries of earthquakes. This masonry was not merely functional but also symbolic, often representing the Inca's relationship with nature. The famous 12-angled stone in Cusco is not just an architectural wonder, but a symbol of the Inca's ability to master the wild, unruly forces of the earth and bind them into a coherent, ordered form. Their cities, like Machu Picchu, defy conventional understanding. Placed high in the clouds, these urban centers were self-sufficient, with advanced water channels and storage systems, ensuring a constant supply of fresh water. The careful placement of buildings to catch the morning sun or to provide a windbreak speaks of a detailed knowledge of the environment and an ability to adapt structures to serve both practical and ceremonial purposes. Indeed, their architectural achievements seem almost superhuman, which fuels speculations about where the Incas could have acquired such knowledge. Some believe that their wisdom was not of this earth, given to them by visitors from the stars who left no other trace than these marvels of stone and soil. This theory is bolstered by the Inca's own mythology, which tells of Viracocha, the creator god who came from the sea and taught the Incas all they knew before heading into the west. On the arid plains of the Peruvian desert, the Nazca lines sprawl across the landscape like a vast tapestry of geoglyphs etched into the earth. These monumental figures range from geometric shapes to zoomorphic designs, including spiders, monkeys, and even what some interpret as astronauts. Their sheer scale defies immediate comprehension and their purpose is cloaked in mystery. Created by the Nazca culture around 500 BCE to 500 CE, these lines were formed by the simple but laborious technique of removing the reddish-brown iron oxide-coated pebbles that cover the surface of the Nazca Desert and uncovering the contrasting whitish ground beneath. Most of the figures are so large that they can only be fully appreciated from the air a fact that has tantalized observers and led to rampant speculation about their creator's intended audience. Theories about the line's purpose range from the astronomical to the divine. One prevailing theory suggests that the lines function as a sort of astronomical calendar, with certain lines aligning to the positions of the sun, moon and stars at pivotal times of the year, such as solstices. This celestial alignment indicates a sophisticated knowledge of astronomy, and a deep need to intertwine their cultural and spiritual practices with the heavens above. Another theory posits that the lines may have played a role in pilgrimage rituals. The lines could have directed processions to sites of great ritual importance, with the shapes perhaps symbolizing animals and objects of religious significance. Imagine lines of worshippers tracing the contours of these immense drawings, a physical and spiritual journey across the sacred landscape, the lines guiding not just their path, but their meditative state. The lines have also been linked to water, a precious resource in such a parched environment. Some researchers have speculated that the geoglyphs were part of a complex system related to water worship and water conservation. With each figure potentially representing a plea to the gods for rain, or perhaps marking the location of underground water sources, 
The Nazca Lines may be a grand expression of the community's collective struggle for survival in an unforgiving climate. Adding to their mystery is the method of construction. The precision with which the lines were made suggests careful planning and coordination, yet the Nazca people left no written records of their methods. It's believed that they used simple tools and surveying equipment made from sticks and ropes, but the execution of such large-scale figures with such accuracy points to a highly organized society with a strong sense of communal effort. Moreover, the durability of the lines is nothing short of astonishing. In a region where winds can whip up sand with fierce intensity, the lines have remained largely undisturbed for over a millennium. This is partly due to the climate, one of the driest on Earth, and the hard, clay-like soil, which is baked solid by the sun. Recent discoveries made using modern technology have uncovered even more lines, suggesting that what we see today may only be a fraction of what existed. These new figures, which include more human-like images, add depth to the enigma of the Nazca lines. They underscore our still-evolving understanding of this ancient culture, and they remind us that the Earth holds many secrets, silently waiting beneath our feet. And as always, we hope you enjoyed our video today. Thanks for watching.